Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where we're working together step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets that you can download in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. There's a page with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials on that website and you can also access information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and techniques on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to best make use of your time when you're actually in the exam room working through your exam paper. So if you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find it all there. If you can give me a like, that'd be really great. And subscribe to my channel to keep updated. And so now we're going to press on with the second paper. We're going to look at theory paper B of the Grade 1 2017 practice papers. So if you turn with me to page 7, and so we'll make a start on these questions here. And I do always recommend that you have a go of these yourself. It doesn't matter if you make some mistakes. You're only ever writing in pencil. You can always just erase. And it's always better to learn through your mistakes. So I'm hoping you've had a go of this. And now we're going to work through this together. So question one asks us to add the time signatures of each of these three examples. Now our bottom number is going to be four because we're counting in quarter notes or crotchet beats and we need to find out how many altogether in crotchets we have in each bar. And so here this last bar is a very easy example. We can see we've got a one beat note here, a one beat note here and we've got a one beat rest as well. So we've got one, two, three crotchet beats in that bar. And you can see here we've got a half and a half makes one a half and a half makes one. And then here, because of the dot, this is now worth three quarters of a beat, half plus a quarter. And then a quarter of a beat gives us our final complete beat altogether. So you can see one, two, three beats there. But this second bar gives us the answer quickly and easily. So our answer is three over four. Let's look in the next example. So now we can see here we've got half a beat and a half a beat, that makes one. A half a beat and a half a beat, that makes two. So our answer is going to be two over four. Of course this bar will also be the same. We've got three quarters of a beat here and a quarter of a beat here. That makes one and then we've got the same again which gives us our second beat. Let's look at the next one. And I think the first bar gives us that most easily. So we've got two beats here. We've got a one beat rest. And then we've got a half a beat and a half a beat, which together gives us our no another beat. Two, three, four beats per bar. So we'd have four over four. Alternatively, you could put the symbol for common time. And so that answers that question. If you want to just check the second bar, we can see that we've got two beats here and then each of these semiquavers or sixteenth notes is worth a quarter of a beat and four quarters makes one whole beat, four quarters makes another whole beat, so two, three, four. Let's press on to the next part of that question. So now we're required to add a rest at each of the two places marked with a little star to make the bars complete. And so we don't know what a complete bar is until we've had a good look at this time signature, which tells us there should be two crotchet beats per bar, or two quarter notes per bar. So we're looking to make whatever adds up to two crotchet beats or two quarter notes. And so here in this first bar that's not quite complete, we can see that we've got one beat, and so we're one beat remaining to make the two, and as a rest, a one beat, a crotchet or a quarter note rest, looks like that. Now in this last bar, although we could add up to two, and a two beat rest is the rest that sits on the middle line like that, that would not be the correct answer, because if you remember, a semi-breathe or a whole note rest, 
which hangs off the fourth line, also means a complete bar's rest regardless of the time signature. So although that four beat rest seems as it's too big for a two beats per bar time signature, that is the shortcut way to just write a full bar's rest in any time signature. And so that would be the correct answer. Let's move on to the next question. So now we need to look at these um, grades of dynamic markings and we need to write out these dynamic mar markings in the correct order from the quietest to the loudest and they've started us off helpfully. So remember P means quiet or piano, forte F means loud and then we've got in between We've got mezzo, which is middle, or moderately loud, moderately quiet. And then when there's two of the letters, so FF or PP, it's sort of issimo, which makes it extra. So pianissimo is extra quiet or very quiet. And fortissimo is extra loud or very loud. And so we can see that the extremes will be from very quiet it's very loud and we just need to fill in the gaps in order to get to that point. So we've already used up PP and we've used up FF and we just need to fill in the difference in the correct order. So after we've been very quiet, just quiet is the next step up. And then before moderately loud, we get moderately quiet. That's our next degree in volume. So we've now finished that one. So moderately loud, mezzo forte is our next step up. Finishing with loud, forte, before we get to the loudest extreme of very loud. So that's that question successfully completed. So let's turn the page. So if you'll turn the page with me now to page eight, we'll have a look at question three. And so question three is looking at the subject of semitones. And first of all, in this first line, we're asked to draw a circle around the higher of the pair out of these each of these pairs of notes. Now we have here a treble clef E and a treble clef E flat. And so if you look at that, we've got an E and an E flat. A flat lowers the note by a semitone, and so therefore the E natural must be the, um, the highest, and so we'd circle the E natural because we know that a flat lowers the note. Now here we have a treble clef F sharp followed by a treble clef F natural, and if you just visualise that on a piano keyboard, you can always sketch this out on the scrap paper when you're taking the exam. You can see that we have an F and an F sharp. A sharp raises the note by a semitone, and so the sharp is the higher note of the pair. And so we know a sharp raises by a semitone, and so we will circle that as the higher of the pair. And so here now we have a flat and a natural. We know that a flat lowers by a semitone, and therefore the natural must be the highest. And if you just see that, if you visualise that, we have a bass clef B natural followed by a bass clef B flat and you can see that the B natural is the higher of the two. So here we have an A flat and an A natural. We know that a flat lowers by a semitone and therefore the natural must be the higher. And then here we have a G natural in the bass clef followed by a G sharp and we know that a sharp raises by a semitone and therefore the sharp must be the higher of the two. Looking at section B we now have to consider which is the lowest of each of these pairs of notes and so here we have a treble clef B natural followed by a treble clef B flat and if you look at that we have a B natural and a B flat. The flat is the lowest of the pair because the flat lowers the note by a semitone and so we know that that one must be the lower one. Now we have a bass clef C followed by a bass clef C sharp and so here we have a C and a C sharp 
Because a sharp raises the note by a semitone, we know therefore that the C must be the lower of the pair because the sharp is the raised note. And so here we can see we have a sharp and a natural. A sharp raises a note by a semitone, therefore the natural must be the lower of the pair. Here we have a flat and a natural, and we know that a flat lowers, and so the flat must be the lower of the pair. And then here we have a sharp and a natural. We know that a sharp raises by a semitone, and therefore the natural must be the lower of the two notes. And there, I think we'll leave this paper and we'll look at the next question in the next video. I do hope that you found this helpful. I hope that it's of benefit to you. If you can give me a like, that will be really great. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. If you visit SharonBill.com, you can make use of all of the resource that's available to you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.